Hey, everybody. It is the Drive to School podcast. Welcome back after Christmas break. I am Pastor Goodman, still with you, the content executive of Higher Things. And joining me today, uh, she has a lot of fancy stuff that goes along with her name, but she is a deaconess named Sarah Longmire. She is my very good friend. She is the president of the Concordia Deaconess Conference, and she is the Bible study editor here at Higher Things. She wears a lot of hats because she also serves as a deaconess in a church. And so we're going to talk a little bit today about sort of life as a deaconess and everything that that involves. How are you doing, Sarah? I'm well, thank you. How are you? I'm doing okay. It's 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 a solid okay day. I'm all right with that. Deal. So, um, I guess just right off the bat, the bat, what's a deaconess? Great question. Okay, so uh, the office of deaconess is an office within the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod for women. So we do mercy work. Um, So we're theologically trained, and then we get to go out and love our neighbors, like intentionally, like in all the things we do. That's pretty simple. Uh, So why do you have to go to school for it? So here's the thing. Um, Theology is incredibly easy, but also incredibly complex, right? So we understand that like law and gospel, grace, um, mercy, but also the good gifts of the Ten Commandments. And it's it gets a little tricky when you are living that out intentionally and leading others in that work as well. So we go to school um, in very similar ways that pastors go to school to learn the stuff, to really have it in our heads, on our lips, in our hearts, in all that we do so that when we are in opportunities to love and serve those around us. We're doing it in the same way that um, pastors are working from the pulpit and in um, word and sacrament. Awesome. So, um, but that that's not quite the same as a pastor though, right? No, absolutely not. Mm-mm. Okay. So what's, what are some of the differences? Well, pastors are men, deaconesses are women. It's pretty straightforward in the Bible about roles and responsibilities. Um, The gift of the deaconess is that we um, get to work a little bit uh, more privately, so a less public way. So you're never going to see a deaconess in the pulpit or helping with communion or up in front of a Sunday service or any type of service, but you're going to see a deaconess um, sitting with the family who had a new baby or teaching Sunday school or visiting the homebound, um, serving your neighbor who's homeless or who's in need. Um, She's going to be the one doing kind of hands and feet work. And this is such a great connection with what um, pastors are called to do with word and sacrament. So we want our pastors to be um, giving the good gifts of Jesus and knowing what that looks like and how that sounds. And so deaconesses with that understanding, with that training and that school and that study, um, we get to do the other things. And not to say that pastors don't serve their neighbor with their hands and feet, but um, let's share the work right? Like let's do that, which we're all, we've all been given to do and work together. Absolutely. Like there's, there's more than enough people to to visit. In fact, um, all of them would, would usually like another visit. It's, it's more love. It's, it's, it's more times to, to share God's gifts. It's, it's more times to, to just even be together. And that's a gift. It's, it's one of those things that takes on a a lot of different roles though. I've noticed for deaconesses. Uh, So I guess I, I would almost sort of say, tell me about an average day in the life of an average deaconess, but why is that hard to do? Well, so I like to say that if you've met a deaconess, you've met a deaconess, because here's the thing. We are all, what we have in common is our theological training. So we've all done the school. We've all, um, we love learning about the Bible and doctrine and church history and like digging into that, which we believe. Thanks be to God. Um, but the gift of the office is each woman can then take that theological training into the other gifts that she's been given. So I um, also have a degree in education and I also have a degree in administration. So I have served in schools. I have served um, in director roles. I'm currently director of family life. So just all of these different pieces within the gifts that God has given me, Sarah Longmire. I have friends who are really good with uh, 
blood and needles and you know doctor things not my cup of tea but I'm really glad you God. said doctor things and they aren't just like <laughs> doing this on the sly that that doesn't seem deaconessy well no what I mean is medical right like so there are women who um know how to take care of the body extremely well but are also spiritually ready to give you the good gifts of Jesus. Um, there's also women that are really, really smart with like math and stuff. Listen, I'm an early childhood education teacher background. I can add, <laughs> nailed it. Okay. But like accounting or I don't even know the words, but there are women who are really good at that. So they work it with RSOs. They work in companies or churches even with finances, with organization that way. And so the gift of the office of deaconess is, listen, mercy is needed everywhere. <laughs> like, let's not even pretend about that. So wherever there's need, oh, a deaconess can serve. And so that's the gift of kind of the versatility, versi yeah, versatility of, of what deaconesses can do. That's awesome. So I, I can't talk to every single deaconess, but I can talk to a, a president of an organization. What's what's the Concordia Deaconess Conference? Okay. So if you've ever seen a deaconess wear navy blue with um, a gold cross on her left shoulder and a gold pin, that is a deaconess part of Concordia Deaconess Conference. Um, I don't want to get bogged down into like all the letters and all the things, but recognized service organization of our synod um, kind of recognizes ah, that there are groups that are aligned with what synodical um, beliefs and, and practices are. So Concordia Deaconess Conference is that organization for deaconesses. So we get together um, every year and we learn. We get to be geeks learning about um, theology, learning about practice, learning about church history. Um, we also like to talk to pastors and lay people about what deaconesses can do, how they benefit congregations and communities. We also like to be at things like higher things and talk to young ladies who may be interested in um, deaconess ministry and what that looks like. So we are an organization of deaconesses within our synod who learn together and have fellowship together and um, get to talk to other people about what we do. That's fantastic. So I, I guess then if, if, tell me about your favorite day as a deaconess. How about that? I only get to pick one. Okay. Yeah. The, the day that, that highlights what you do. Why, why do you love getting up in the morning and putting on okay. navy blue? Okay, so um, I love teaching. <laughs> I love teaching the faith. So um, there are two days during the week that I get to teach the preschool that's on site. So I do preschool Bible time, which is like amazing. And then I also get to teach Bible with moms. So like we get together and we talk about what it is to be Christian parents, to love our children, to love one another. Um, but then I also get to teach youth. So I get to teach high schoolers that their identity is in their baptism and that they're loved and that they have a place where they are seen and known and heard. Um, so those would be things, okay, I may have taken my favorite parts of like multiple days, but you don't know, it could all happen in one day. But those are the things that I love to do. Those are the things that get me excited to share. Um I mean, I've got other things, but you know, those are like the highlights. No, that's fair. So, uh, how do you know if you should become a deaconess? Hmm. That's an interesting question. I, um, became a deaconess in kind of a funny way. Um, I'd never heard of them when I was growing up. And then when I was first introduced, it was still kind of like, eh, I'm not sure, or not for me teacher all the way. Mm -hmm. Um, but then I had two pastors independent of one another say, you know what, Sarah, I think you should be a deaconess. I'm sorry. What's that? Why? And I guess what they saw in me and what I understood or recognized after I investigated what the office was, um, was this really, really exciting exciting interest in theology. So all the things about the Bible, about what we believe, about who we are, who God is, really, really interested in that. 
Um, also really interested in sharing that with other people. So volunteering to, to show mercy, um, to be the mercy givers to the people around me. So, I mean, you have to be a girl. So, so girls consider that, but then if you are interested or excited about, um, Bible, about hymnody, about liturgy, about church doctrine, about church history, about sharing Jesus. Um, if you have this goal or this idea that you want to love and serve your neighbor in whatever capacity or gift you have, like, why don't you be a deaconess? That's awesome. Sarah, thanks so much for hanging out today. You're very welcome. Hey, have a good one. Thanks.